Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trail Talk. We're so glad you could join us today. We're in the classroom studio again at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I'm Edie. I'm Mary. And uh, we it's have- nice and warm in here. It is warm. <laughs> in fact, if I wasn't standing here talking, I might lay down and take a little nappy nap. If I fall asleep, it's because <laughs> I've over layered okay. and I'm nice and warm. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel like being warm today. I know. Yeah. Um, oh, is it? Oh, well. Well, we might. We might bump it down a little. It's, it is a, <laughs> yeah, it is a little- uh, it's not exactly swimsuit weather in this room. No, but, it's not. Uh, <laughs> but it is warm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you for watching. We have a super interesting episode today. We're going to cover uh, the next five, um, which is going to be the governor's number six through ten <clears throat> on our trip down governor lane. A trip down governor lane. And this, remember, it's not the territorial governors, but the actual the state statehood. governors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and wow. <laughs> we have, <laughs> you know, those first five guys, I thought mm, they're, they're an interesting bunch, yeah. you know, well, they're, they're, it was probably well, slip pickings. Yeah. Back in, back in, you know, early yeah. statehood days. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, these guys are from like 19, <clears throat> 21 or something like that, um, 22, 23, something yeah. um, and forward. So, I mean, Oklahoma has been a state for 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. At this and, point, yeah. yeah. Well, let me get the first guy, the first one up here, Martin Trapp. Okay, from 1923. So Oklahoma has been a state for probably five years. He was probably elected in late 22 mm -hmm. and took office in 23. So, um, you know, we, it just, I don't know, <laughs> 15 years, Oklahoma has been a state for 15 years. We've had five previous governors mm -hmm. and buckle your seatbelts people. He kind of looks like, you know, I see them in the trap, you know, sound of music, the Vaughn trap. The Vaughn trap. He looks like, he does. He kind of looks like, I if you hear any singing, it's not going to be for me, but <laughs> I can't guarantee you. Yeah, uh, but he is Oklahoma's sixth governor. He was born mm -hmm. in 1877. Interesting. His family participated in the very first land run mm -hmm. of 1889. Um, no indication that them they were Sooners or Boomers. Right. Right. Um, I think they were just the um, just the normal folks mm -hmm. and normal followers. Yeah, yeah. And they settled on a farm near Guthrie. So you know that that was where that big big mm -hmm. land run happened up there. Um, and that you know. Got three, if you remember from the lesson about the first five, that was the original state capital. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of the very first towns established exactly. um, post yeah. statehood. Um, but he um, he received his education through private teaching, I'm guessing at home probably, mm -hmm. or a neighbor taught. I think he was one of like eight or nine kids Several or something siblings, like that. Yes. Yeah. And um, anyway, he went to a Capital City Business College in Guthrie, Capital City, get it, clever name there. Yeah. And he ended up uh, teaching at Coyle, which is another city up there north in the northern, northern part, of the, part of the state. Yeah. Um, he was a Democrat, of course. Remember, uh, Oklahoma's like first, I can't even remember how many governors yeah. were Democrats. Several down. But again, just a little reminder, these were the days where the Democrats were the more conservative party and the Republicans were the more liberal right. party. So kind of a change. Yeah, it's, it's, things are a little bit different than they are today. Um, but uh, he entered politics in 1905 before statehood was Logan County clerk. And then after statehood, he became the state's first Judge. auditor. He was oh, the, the, yeah, the first auditor there. state <laughs> auditor. So I guess, and you know, uh, he, he must have. He had a knack for that kind of. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm thinking. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm, yeah. And in 1914, he was elected as lieutenant governor. And he served in that capacity until... He uh, he took over. Uh, let's see, from John Walton. Yeah, uh, John Walton, who was the, the previous, previous governor. governor, was impeached. I don't know if you guys remember that in 1923, but and that was when he became governor. 
Now, he's just avoided being impeached himself, <laughs> survived that, and then, I mean, to me, it's kind of, you know, impeachment um, hearings and all that seem like kind of a newer thing, uh, you know, as far as governments go. Mm -hmm. But man, in they, early Oklahoma they, statehood, they, they were, had a chance to do it. They were doing it. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> impeach, <laughs> impeach. Right. They didn't like something. And they were. Yeah. I, they were just crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, John Walton was impeached, and that is how Martin Trapp became our sixth governor. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but I, he did a pretty good job. He economized the state government and the state treasury actually had a surplus, right, a surplus. when he left mm -hmm. in 1927. Um, he uh, he promoted um, good roads. Uh, Fish and Game Commission. Yeah. Uh, he established and organized a lot of new agencies, transferred uh, power from the county commissioners to more of a state mm -hmm. si uh -huh, situation, which you know, in early statehood, I mean, 15 years, but still early statehood, I would think that it was probably important to transfer those powers so that the state itself became a governing body, mm -hmm. as opposed to each county, right, loosely just being there. Yeah, and kind of doing their own thing, mm -hmm. even though they, there are still reasons for city government and county government. Oh, well, yeah. well, um, but when it comes to, even though now, who's in charge of the um, county roads, mm -hmm. the county, county commissioners, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes you can be traveling down a road and you know when you enter another county. Oh, yeah. It, before you even see a sign mm -hmm. because of the condition of the road. Yes, yeah, it's like when you cross over Texas and Oklahoma, yes. you can tell. Yes. I mean, the sound true. of it's different. The pavement's different. Mm -hmm. Just the texture. Yeah. It's just I've different. I've always thought that that was an unusual phenomenon but it happens mm -hmm. i mean it's 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 mm -hmm. a real deal anyway um so uh he um ran up against opposition from organized labor and a faction of the infamous yet powerful ku klux klan mm -hmm. who seemed to got their finger yeah. in a lot of things happening yes, in our do. state <clears throat> or they did yes Yes, I mean back in the right. day we they they had a lot of influence mm -hmm. and on the first five governors mm -hmm. there were a lot of mentions of the Ku Klux mm -hmm. Klan in those mm -hmm. days as well. Anyway, um they a faction of them tried to try to impeach him from being governor. And mm -hmm. uh it did fail. He announced in 26, 1926 that he wanted to run for governor because he felt like he had just completed the previous governor's term but now remember in those days you could only serve one, one term. term one four-year term as governor and um there was a ruling that uh the state supreme court said no you serve you've had your term yeah for four mm -hmm. years and so <clears throat> you can't be governor again yeah. so anyway uh <clears throat> and then he tried again in 1930 and that attempt failed, failed as well yeah, yeah. Um, and so he went right back and didn't even bat an eye, got, became very uh, successful in construction, oil and gas, Bond things broker. like that. Yes. Yeah. Stockbroker. And he was, he was kind of a, a, uh, uh, like to participate in um, organizations, community. Mm -hmm. uh, the Elks? Yeah. The Elks Lodge, the uh, Masonic Lodge, uh, Odd Fellows. I mean, he was, those were all organizations that do a lot for communities mm -hmm. and so anyway he was you know he was a a lot of times I think people see politicians as um, power mm -hmm. kind of people but it seems like maybe his motivation really was to help more service oriented mm -hmm. yeah yeah and which is what the true meaning of being a politician I, to me it should be about service right because you're elected mm -hmm. you know for that reason mm -hmm. yeah but uh you know i mean we've all seen 
the, the power the people, money hungry yeah, yeah. who yeah. go the other way anyway um he died in 1951 following a surgery at um, saint anthony's hospital and he's buried in fairlawn cemetery in oklahoma city um but uh they they said that um he represented the heart of humanity because of his humble beginnings living in a log cabin one of ten kid children yeah. in the family um, yeah and uh had his first success he sold i thought this was impressive several hundred dollars worth of maps of oklahoma territory in 1901 mm -hmm. in el reno so imagine back then several hundred dollars. several hundred dollars worth of maps that seems That's like a, that would have been a lot yeah yeah I mean, good on you, man. That's a yeah, that's and a, and you know, in 1901, and yeah, then to turn it, you know, that would have been a state, and six years later, yeah. I mean, he was a little go getter. So yeah, anyway, a, um, a man named Rex Harlow said that that he was able to step into the breach, the impeachment, and quickly bring order out of chaos, and so conduct the office of governor for the remaining period of his income incumbency is a tribute to his capacity so he stepped into an office um and had to take over and write mm -hmm. a mess mm -hmm. that had been left behind so anyway uh martin trapp the sixth governor of oklahoma all right next we have henry johnston <laughs> he's a an interesting looking character i was telling uh, mary that there are a couple of different places where you can find photographs of <laughs> these guys and one of them yeah. is on the Oklahoma history uh, website and those are the photographs like I their, chose I believe that they're pictures of when they were the, like their government ship type yes pictures. like their portrait right or whatever there's another one <laughs> another website and it's the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and they're taken a little later in life and some of them I was like they should have chosen the different pictures terrifying terrifying i i thought i'm going to show these men in a much younger state of better life yes when they yeah because this one almost looks like one of those ones you would see in a haunted mansion where the <laughs> eyes would follow you, you know him. that's true that's true but uh henry johnson so he was born in indiana he kind of uh takes it a little while to get um <clears throat> to oklahoma he moves to kansas and then goes to colorado and he's an attorney in Colorado before he comes to Oklahoma but he comes for the 1893 land run the Cherokee outlet yes the Cherokee outlet and uh so that is how he ends up in Oklahoma I kind of love it how these guys came during the land runs you know and it just kind of shows the succession of um how the land runs brought right. prominent yeah. people yeah it was to just, Oklahoma. you know farmers and ranchers yeah. and things they mean exactly brought in our governor yes mm -hmm. I, I i think that's an important thing to note um anyway so he settled near perry which is also north, north you know the, the cherokee outlets up there um perry's just north of stillwater a little ways just for reference um anyway uh he was a lawyer and in political circles he was elected to the Oklahoma Territorial Council in 1896 so I'm thinking he lives here for three years he establishes himself mm -hmm. among the people the in the state yeah, yeah pretty quickly right um and then in 1906 he was elected to the Oklahoma Constitutional Convention which I think um I have a quote from him but um I think that that's probably his greatest achievement. achievement yes um i did i thought this was uh kind of well he wrote the initiative and referendum sections of our state constitution, constitution. Mm -hmm. so kind of the uh thomas jefferson of the oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> constitution He's thomas jefferson yeah um <laughs> and he served in the state senate and um he married a reporter um who covered this mm -hmm. the new legislature and then they adopted four children which i thought was a lovely uh mm -hmm. thing did we his, did you look this up too the uh, because he was served as its president pro tempore yes what is, what is that what is that um 
So that is the name given to the leader of, of the, that uh -huh, that body. <clears throat> okay. In the uh, I just had never seen it worded that way. Yes. Yeah. Um. So he ran, tried running for uh, Congress twice as a Democrat, and um, again overcoming charges that supported that he supported the Ku Klux Klan, which he did not evidently. Um, but he he ran for governor in 1926 and was elected and um, was the first person to open his inauguration with a prayer. Mm -hmm. And it was the first inauguration mm -hmm. that was held over the radio. Mm -hmm. And there were like 20,000 people, which seemed like a huge there amount the of crowd. people. Uh, yeah, there to see his inauguration and they had loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. So this is all technology. Right. Um, of selling of the times there. Exactly. Coming about. Yeah, yeah. So I thought th those were really cool kind of uh, mm -hmm. marks as far as, um, you know, technology improving and allowing more people to experience um a, a big event right like right. that um but he pushed through bills to create to increase state education spending these early a lot of these early governors education was huge mm -hmm. huge for them mm -hmm. where important. have those days gone i'm, I'm gonna keep mm -hmm. moving and he uh, also created a crippled children's hospital which that wording is very outdated right but uh, you know, it was probably like a predecessor to Children's, children's Hospital, hospital. more like devoted to the children. Mm -hmm. Yes, people, you know, pediatricians, mm -hmm. doctors who specialize in the care of children, which it's a whole different area of medicine than dealing with adults. Right. And, yeah. and so I, I mean, that that was a great thing that he did. Um, and then he lost grace with these state legislators, as happens frequently. And these, I mean, these guys have four years. They got they have one term, and it doesn't seem like anybody is ever happy with them, no matter what. Um, anyway, uh, it the rift widened <laughs> until guess what they wanted to do? Impeach. 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 The if House all of, else fails. Yeah. Impeach. If all else fails. The House of Representatives brought impeachment charges against him. 11 counts. Good much. Of um, things like illegally hiring state employees, which, National you know, there's a, there's a, there's someone in the legislature right now, and I can't recall the man's name, but um, like um, his wife's family had always had the tag agency mm -hmm. in the town where they lived mm -hmm. and so his wife was working at the tag agency and as a a wife of a legislator I guess that that's illegal or it's something and, yeah and so there's like a, a some kind of a case against this oh, person really? and I have never I have not heard the word impeach tied to right. it maybe they've kind of squelched some of that right um, but anyway, yeah, it's like, so anyway, it, evidently this was a thing way back when too. Um, and so this uh, group of representatives, they were going to meet, and I guess he called the National Guard to kind of prohibit oh. that meeting. That, and so that was another charge against him. <laughs> Caught him on that one. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, the Senate found him not guilty on all but one of the um, he charges. And so he was our second governor to be impeached. So I mean, went. sorry, yeah, down he oh, went, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but um, after he left the governor's office, he was elected to the yes, state so, Senate yeah. for two terms. Yeah, so, so he couldn't have been all that bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's just one term. Yeah, I just, okay, so we were talking, games. so there were, there were plenty, uh, there were, politicians or at least a lot of these people were attorneys and became politicians mm -hmm. early on but it's maybe there weren't enough people interested in politics that they would let the people who were impeached come back 
to politics or people who, I don't know, it seemed, it seems a little, maybe they had to take a class, <laughs> but well, I think that, I think eventually people felt bad about impeaching him because they said, they said he died on January 7th, 1965, one day after a proposal to soften his impeachment, it was introduced in the house. So it sounds to me like mm -hmm. there were some people saying, hey, you know what? That it wasn't really impeach worthy. Yeah. 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 And so, um, but, you know, I, I'm sure they must have dropped it or something. I never found anything that said anything else. But um, in 1980, the home that where he lived mm -hmm. in uh, Perry, right. there was a big auction. And so people could go and uh, take things mm -hmm. from the house and it raised like $25,000. Over 400 people attended. Yeah, so I don't know what kind of collectibles or whatever mm -hmm. it was he had, but um, he, I, you know, he must have had a, a and really good people, life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, and his quote, he said, I am prouder of the day in my life when I gaveled the Oklahoma Constitutional Convention to order in Guthrie than any other so being a part of that mm -hmm. and I can I can imagine I mean can you imagine such a a great historical document and you're a part of that state. forever and ever yes mm -hmm. and he was like the mm -hmm. order calling to mm -hmm. order that is kind of cool right so anyway uh yes mm -hmm. Henry Johnston mm -hmm. okay um next William Holloway mm -hmm. yeah he looks a little this was the Drippy good. Eyes. This was a good picture. Okay. Just FYI. <laughs> um, so he was at home uh, when he found out that he was appointed governor because so he was appointed. He was lieutenant governor, much like uh, 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 not Taft. Uh, mm -hmm. the Trap. Time. Yeah, Trap. Von Trap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, much like Martin Trap was, and and so he um became the governor after uh holloway no, he is holloway after johnston was impeached mm -hmm. and um he again had to you know kind of right the ship and try to get goodwill amongst all the legislators mm -hmm. and the people of oklahoma because a second governor had been impeached right um he's from arkansas and um Arkadelphia. Yeah, Arkadelphia. Uh and he was friends with um Henry Bennett, who became the president of Oklahoma AM, now Oklahoma State University. Mm -hmm. Um, and with his help, with Bennett's help, he was named the principal of the Hugo Elementary School. And uh eventually he got a law degree and opened a law office there in Hugo and was elected Choctaw County prosecuting attorney in 1916. So he was an attorney for a while. Mm -hmm. He signed up to fight in World War I, but by the time they got everything processed, it they had, yeah, the 11th there. hour of the 11th day of the 11th <laughs> Armistice Day had happened. <laughs> and so he never went, um, but he was uh, chosen as this, President pro tem for uh, the Senate. Um, and uh, he was, let's see. Um, okay. In 26, he, he was the Lieutenant Governor. Yeah, yeah. And then he, okay, so he pushed mm -hmm. legislation to improve State Highway Commission. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about this when mm -hmm. we were talking about the first life. Right. Getting roads that people could, Travel, travel safely mm -hmm. um, had to have been a really big deal in those days. Mm -hmm. You know, Oklahoma was one of the later states. We were what, the 47? I want to say it was 47. 47? Six or seven. Yeah, yeah. 46. We um, were in the late 40s. Yes, we were. Seemed like, okay, uh, New Mexico and Arizona, Alaska, and Hawaii were the last four, maybe. Okay. So I think we were 46. But yeah, that sounds right. Um, anyway, uh, our fact checker, I bet, is looking that up for <laughs> us right now. Um, but so we were kind of late in the game. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, building roads across because the, a lot of the land prior to the land runs was um, reservation mm -hmm. land for the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And so I, we probably just I didn't, didn't have that. Up. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, that was that's kind of a big thing. And he wanted to eliminate toll roads and bridges. And if only. Yeah, he, had been successful. He, he didn't succeed, obviously, in that. <laughs> we still that got area. a lot of them around yeah, here. We sure do. Um, <clears throat> but he was during, he was, uh, so the stock market crash mm -hmm. happened Great in 29 depression. and the Great Depression ensued. And uh, so he led us through those first couple of years that had to have been very difficult. Now, can you imagine like you have, to, you're taking office, you have to kind of smooth everything over. And then you have and the great depression hit the bottom and it's like out. when do it's kind of like when do i get to do what i want yeah i came in here to do yeah, now i don't know what year like the dust bowl like it's mm, officially right, started, started but i have a feeling i mean it was leading up to it it's, it's not like two years i guess he was only there two years when yeah he, yeah because he did not he was uh, it, run again yeah <laughs> he was like <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> done. I am not doing this again. Mm -hmm. Um and so his uh his son became a lawyer and was served on the US Court of Appeals, the Tenth Circuit, and he was appointed by President Lyndon Johnson. How so cool that's that. that's pretty a pretty cool little thing. Um and uh William Holloway died in 1970 in Oklahoma City. Um he was he, 81. Yeah. He was first, last, and always an Oklahoman. I will miss his support and cooperation on matters affecting the state. And that was a, step, a quote from Governor Dewey Bartlett. So he, Bartlett was governor in 1970. And I guess um, that Mr. Holloway or a Governor Holloway um, was there to um, mentor right. and help people all through those years. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, a good, clean. Um, he was not impeached. Was not impeached. <laughs> that's right. And during this little <laughs> stretch of time, that's saying something. I know, right? Okay, I'm very excited to get to this next, next guy. One. Yeah. William Alfalfa Bill Murray. Now, his later in life picture was most. Oh, hang on. Oh, I went to. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, his picture absolutely. This is a much better picture, even though it's not a full on picture. He kind um, of has a Sam Elliott look. He me. does. That, he does. Uh -huh. He really does. Uh, anyway, so he served from 31 to 35. He um, actually, he was elected, but his life prior to being elected was a lot. There, there was a lot. A lot too. Yeah. So um, he was born, first of all, he was born in Toad Suck. Texas. Bless his heart. That is probably the greatest name of a town I have ever seen. Toad Suck. It's near Collinsville, which that doesn't help me. But. Oh, man. Um, anyway, so he grew up in north central Texas. And when he was 12 years old, he ran away from home. And so for the next seven years, he worked basically, it sounded like kind of a migrant mm -hmm. farm worker. Mm -hmm. He was just a, a hired hand. Right. Is, yeah. On farms. Uh -huh, and yeah. A, a laborer. Um, attended schools uh, sporadically, um, and it, but eventually he became a public school teacher in Parker County, Texas. And I meant to look this up. So um, the Parker family, the Quanta Parker's mother, Cynthia Parker, her family um, owned a lot of land in a northern a little Texas. to the east, central eastern part of Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that Parker County is that is not that same Parker. Uh -huh, named for her family. Because Great possibility. Oh, our fact checker will have to get back to think on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so he he became school teacher. Yeah, I, I'm always kind of impressed with. Um, people like him who ran away but still went to school ran away yeah went to school whenever he had a chance when he didn't have to work mm -hmm. but and then continued to pursue education mm -hmm. later on um anyway and he had a, a skill for public speaking 
uh, they refer to him as an orator. So, you know, that that's a that is a, a really great accomplishment mm -hmm. too, especially for someone who's not all that educated. Right. Um, but he uh, spoke in opposition of the People's or Populist Party while he was a member of the faction of the Democratic Party led by someone whose last name is Hogg, James Hogg. And he campaigned actively for Hogg when he sought um, governorship. Now, this is all still in Texas. Okay. Okay. This is not in Oklahoma yet. He's, he's still living down there. So um, he was a leader in the Democratic Party. And then he started a newspaper. Of course, the um, Daily News. Yeah. Um, ran twice for the state Senate. Lost both times. Paper failed. <laughs> um, so he moved to Fort Worth and became an attorney. I, I don't suppose law school was a thing so much back then, but he passed the bar and became an attorney. And, but his practice didn't really make it. So finally he moved to uh, Indian territory near Tishomingo. This was in 1898. Yeah, 1898. Um, and so Tishomingo was the capital of the Chickasaw nation in those days. And, uh, so he immediately uh, developed a relationship with the tribal mm -hmm, leaders. Mm -hmm. He even married a woman who uh, was the niece of the governor of the Chickasaw people. Mm -hmm. And so his legal practice, it became very yeah, lucrative and right. he was very well respected and well thought of. He was a friend of the people uh, where he lived. And um, he became deeply involved in Chickasaw politics. Okay. So then there was this big effort for state the state of, of Sequoia, mm -hmm. not the state of Oklahoma. And it was only Indian territory. They were going to name it Sequoia. This was like in 1905. And he was really in on that, really pushing right. for that. Right. Um, and, you know, probably because the Chickasaw people uh, trusted him and uh, felt like he was a good leader, that probably... Um, helped him gain respect from other Native American peoples as well. They had already, they were looking up to him so they felt trust, they could trust him. Yes, as well. yeah. So um, the state of Sequoia fails. So then along comes the uh, joint effort of Oklahoma and Indian territories coming together to form the state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And um, as we all know, that is highly successful in 1907. Uh, but he was, um, this is when he earned the nickname Alfalfa Bill, mainly because he always fought for the farmers. Agriculture was his big um, uh, like platform. soapbox platform. Yeah, that was what he was always promoting. Um, so uh, he, he was... Um, Okay, I, I didn't realize this. So the information I where I got this said that Taft, President Taft, he became president after Teddy Roosevelt. So he was not president when Oklahoma became a state. Roosevelt mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. Taft became president after Roosevelt. And he did not like the idea of Oklahoma becoming a state. But he was a conservative <clears throat> and in those days they were worried about how states viewed it wasn't slavery but it was rights for people of color versus white people okay and so there was uh, if you if a conservative state was added a liberal state should be added to equal because out. yeah everything was about equal this equal that and so he was he didn't want that to happen but you know Teddy Roosevelt he promised Oklahoma in 1905 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he would help us attain statehood and he did mm -hmm. um so um anyway um Murray uh led uh work in the Oklahoma constitution um included numerous uh, reforms of being advocated by progressive groups in both parties. So he was a part of all of that. 
He won a seat in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. in the first legislature, and his colleagues elected him Speaker of the House, even more evidence of his oratory skills. Right. Um, so this is so interesting. So he mm -hmm. thought that he wanted to curb business excesses so agriculture could be enhanced in the state, mm -hmm. where, where Oklahoma would re remain an agricultural a dominant state and business, not so much. Right, right. Take a second hand. And you see. know, I mean, we still hear the same argument today where our state offers enticing benefits, you know, tax cuts and this and that to bring agriculture, well, the, to bring the other companies to the state. And we don't support the agriculture. Um, the agricultural side of business. side of yeah it, as much um, as we should, mm -hmm. and I I feel like that's just a that's a I guess it's been a battle kind of a decline in a, that area. It's, uh, it's just and it's been a battle since the days of alfalfa mm -hmm. bill. Um, that, that that's kind of interesting, but he constantly I mean fight 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 for agriculture. Um, so he tried to run for governor in 1910. That failed. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. So he went to Washington, D.C. and served there <clears throat> um, and then ran and was elected for a second term. And then during those uh, years, he championed Woodrow Wilson's preparedness program. Um, then I guess the people of Oklahoma weren't quite as big a champions of Wilson's <laughs> programs as Alfalfa as, Bill was. Mm -hmm. And so um, he just couldn't overcome the, he had more of the rural people behind him, but the population of towns and cities was increasing. Mm -hmm. And so the they, but that's who was winning the elections, the candidates right. that represented the people in the towns and cities. I mean, it's the same today, right. it's, it's the same right. thing. So, um, he, uh, after being discouraged, poor guy, by all this, he had a brilliant idea. He was going to move to Bolivia. <laughs> and so he did. He and his family and some uh, people who supported his politics mm -hmm. packed up and he was going to start. Sons and their spouses and some neighbors. Yeah. Start a brand new community <clears throat> in Bolivia. Well, um, <laughs> They got down there, the, the Bolivian government did not give any kind of financial support to this. Um, harsh living conditions really got to the people who would settle down there. The colony collapsed. I guess it was not a community as much as it was a colony. And so he, fed, he came back to Oklahoma and I mean, believe it or not, our states, um, Politics were in a people. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. Can you believe right? it. Yeah. So while he was gone, uh, Oklahoma, some Oklahomans had enjoyed a lot of prosperity in the 20s, but the dreaded Ku Klux Klan, Back again. they were just wrecking havoc in the mm -hmm. 1920s mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. Yep. It was a, evidently, it was really a bad. Well, that was when. That was when the Greenwood fire and all that happened. That was all in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, anyway, he uh, there was a collapse in agriculture prices. But now remember, this is 1931. Um, this is like the Great Depression, mm -hmm. the Dust Bowl, all of that's happening. Um, and he gets in here and uh, he won the... Uh, he was elected governor in 1930. So he takes office in 31. Mm -hmm. And he was irascible, <laughs> controversial, and extraordinarily colorful. I love those descriptions yes. of him. So in other words, he uh, probably didn't know how to kind of keep his mouth shut. Yeah. So he um, attacked the administrators of the states, colleges, and universities, which I wonder how that worked with his friend, Mr. Bennett, right? President of okay. Texas a and &E. I mean, Oklahoma a and &E. &E. Yeah, that's, yeah. In, that's interesting. Um, he, but he planted food <laughs> on the lawn of the Capitol to feed homeless people. Right. I mean, 
He, he was very colorful. Very <laughs> colorful. I just love that. You know, who else did that? Michelle Obama at the White House. Oh. I would, I, after I read that, I, I thought, I wonder if she knew about <laughs> oh, him. Do, yeah. Anyway, then there was another controversy about toll bridges and crossing the Red River. Mm -hmm. And um, so he had to send the National Guard down there repeatedly to open bridges that were not toll roads to allow people to cross back cross and back forth, forth without having to pay money. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, just one thing after another. Um, also, he advocated, I thought this was interesting, for um, slowing down, prorating or limiting the production of oil and gas so that prices would go, go up. up. If you lower supply, demand will go up. There's Simple economics mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was, I made a note. So this must have been before we started using foreign oil here in the U.S. You're still using. We were using all production, US. all produced yeah. in, um, yeah, in the U.S. I don't know, I th but I thought <clears throat> that that was kind of interesting. Anyway, um, so he thought that he was extremely popular because <laughs> so many people knew him and all of mm -hmm. his um, antics. Right. He just decided to run for president. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. he wasn't really popular. He was just well known. Well known. <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference. But his, um, okay, he wore rumpled, ash covered, food stained clothes as he traveled across the country advocating his platform bread butter bacon and beans i don't know why he didn't win i have no idea it kind of reminds me of uh what's that uh that movie where um albert alfred where he's drunk all the time and he had all the money you know but he always looked like oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's what that reminds me of. arthur yeah arthur, arthur yeah <clears throat> um so, uh, and he was defeated by Franklin Roosevelt. Well, he served, what, four terms? Right. I mean, I guess he had just started his fourth right. term when he died. So, yeah, that that's kind of a, <laughs> yeah. he was really up against someone. But he, um, the people who were part of the New Deal mindset were not, mm. they were not on board with bread, butter, bacon, and beans, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, he he lost and just kind of uh, faded, Boy. faded out. Yeah, he was um, after his term as governor oh, ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went back to Tishomingo, and then his true colors came out, mm -hmm. and he was incredibly racist and anti-Semitic and um, defended segregation, condemned urbanization and industrialization, which mm -hmm. countered agriculture, you know, urbanization, industrialization, right. that, that was all against the, the <clears throat> agriculture, which he still loved. So at least, I guess he was true to His that uh -huh, yeah, the hard. whole time, but, you know, shame other things came, yeah. came out. Um, anyway, uh, in 1950, his son was elected governor, and that was, he was, he went back, he got to go back to the mansion, yeah, for that, and he died in 1956 <clears throat> after uh, having a stroke, yeah, but he was known as Alfalfa Bill to his supporters, and Cucklebur Bill uh, to his enemies. I if those were in his disheveled. Yeah wrinkled clothes. Uh, but I thought that this was a great quote. He said, a public official is one who is too honest to be bought, too wise to be deceived, and too brave to be intimidated. I thought that was a really yeah, sound, it is. really sad. And you know, there's no indication that he was ever sold, that he ever sold out mm -hmm. or, you know, was dishonest. Not, I mean, his views on certain things, I would not agree with, but he was true to his, his beliefs ta and ties to yeah. agriculture. He couldn't be bought. All right. So the last governor we're going <laughs> to visit about today is Ernest E.W. Marland, a governor from 35 to 39. Another, um, I'll say colorful. Yeah. Colorful. Colorful is like, um, yeah. So um, good way to describe yeah. him. <clears throat> he was a very successful 
um, businessman prior to becoming governor yep. of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, <clears throat> he was born in 1874 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the youngest mm -hmm. and only son of eight. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure, I felt certain he was doted on oh, a lot, but he had a, a lot of education and became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> um, at 19, yeah, uh, yeah, at 19. So I think he was very intelligent, probably driven. And then in two years after that, he began his own law, uh, practicing law. Yeah, yeah. So he, um, and then he like, he got into the the coal industry, which was having a big boom At in Pennsylvania right. in those days. Earned a, I mean, made a ton a of lot money. Of money. And then um, the bottom fell out, and there was something called the Panic of 1907. Um, he had married a lady named Mary Collins in 1903, and um, the, the Panic of 1907 caused him to lose his fortune. Mm -hmm. So um, he became friends with the Miller family who owned the 101 Ranch and City. the famous Bill Pickett <clears throat> mm -hmm. and his brothers performed at the 101 Ranch. Uh, Bill Pickett was a, an African-American cowboy. Mm -hmm. And um, so the 101 was uh, quite famous. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's near Ponca City. And so he ended up buying land up there and investing in uh, oil drilling, <clears throat> and boy, <laughs> did, again made more money. Yes, he hit it big. <clears throat> um, he drilled seven dry holes before he made the first discovery, and then as one led to another, he formed all these different companies until in 1921 he consolidated them into Marland Oil Company. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> you know, now 1921. So he's making all this money. The years are rolling by. And what happens eventually? 1929 comes mm -hmm. along. And now prior, right before that, um, a group called the Continental Oil Company, I read somewhere else that they were associated with J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. bought out. Actually, it was a hostile takeover. There was a hostile takeover of his company. Of his company. Mm -hmm. And so he ended up um not being the owner of all of that so he was like a he just had a figurehead yeah. role right and then by the early 30s he had lost all of that as well um but when he moved up there to ponca city um so you guys have heard of the marlin mansion well he bought this large piece of land he hired a ton of people to work for him and he was one of the first owners, business owners, he provided health insurance for his employees. He bought, um, built 400 homes for people who worked for his for companies. Yes. So he was really about investing into, in his employees. Mm -hmm. So he was Took well respected. Him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was very much well respected. Um, but he had this lavish lifestyle, um, what, what is that? Whoops. If I look up the correct situation, my mind went. Oh, okay. It's 1947. Uh, it was what? 47. What were you looking up now? I can't remember. Neither can I. But I think it was the uh, Great Depression, wasn't it? Or the Dust Bowl? No, no. no. It was the, uh, uh, the roads, you know. Oh, the, the yes. roads. Oh, no. okay. Okay. Yeah. No. No. You were looking, you were, yes. which, which number state we were. That's oh, what you six. were. We were 46. Okay. But yeah. I, it was you know what? We will get back to you guys on that 1947 date. Just, yeah. Our fact it, was a date, it was a date in history. It's a date in history. Yeah. Anyway, so um, he had this lavish lifestyle, um, very social, very mm -hmm. philanthropic. Um, the, they, he gave gifts. He built a hospital, parks. city parks. Yeah. Charities I uh, gave to all kinds of the pioneer woman statue. That statue, mm -hmm. he commissioned the pioneer woman statue. Wow. That is super cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really did a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he and his wife never had any children of their own. Right. So her sister had two children, George and Liddy, 
And they came to live with Marlon and his wife, and they raised them as their own children, eventually adopting mm -hmm. them. And so these kids had the best of everything oh, because yeah. the Marlin family was so okay. wealthy. Um, so after a long illness in 1926, his wife, Mary, died. And two years later, <laughs> this is where I get he, he and Liddy, his adopted daughter slash niece, left Oklahoma, went to Pennsylvania, where he had the adoption annulled, and they got married, hmm. and she became the new Mrs. Marland, mm -hmm. and uh, they took an extended honeymoon, and then came back, and the Marlin Mansion, which still is in Ponca mm -hmm. City, was her wedding gift from him. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. That one, yeah. that just, I am just <clears throat> weirded out yeah. a little bit by that. Yeah. I mean, there was no true was no bloodline there. Yeah, but uh, still. Anyway, um, so uh, agitated by all of the loss of everything, um, he changed his alliance from Republican to Democrat and ended up running for governor and was elected then. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he wanted to bring the new deal to Oklahoma and ended up being successful in all that. So he was kind of the opposite side from alfalfa bill, right? As far as politics mm -hmm. go, alfalfa bill was no new deal. He was mm -hmm. all for it. Yeah. Um, anyway, there was, uh, a contentious relationship between him and the legislature again, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Um, because he wanted to bring a total relief package. Now, this sounds very familiar. Listen closely. He wanted to bring a total relief package from the federal government to Oklahoma. People in Oklahoma didn't want, or not the legislators in Oklahoma didn't want to participate. Mm -hmm. It was kind of opposite of what happened recently. Right. Where the legislators were for the, the support package. The governor was not. Um. And so, anyway, it all led to an unsuccessful attempt for governor, for U.S. senator. It ended his political right. it ended days. Yeah, yeah. It did. Um, his, <clears throat> his administration only got a small portion of the New Deal programs brought to the state. He did get a strong educational program uh, package mm -hmm. introduced here and implemented as well as the Department of Safety and Highway Patrol. So, I mean, those were important, right. those are important right. organizations. Okay. So, um, but his political skills and skills and personal ambition. See, it sounds like he was about gaining power mm -hmm. and less about being a servant of the people. The people. That's right. Yeah. So and so, well. yeah, he was um, a one-termer, but they all were, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Oklahoma Laws. <laughs> Um, anyway, he left in 1939, went back to Ponca City and tried to rebuild the oil company, um, actually ran for U.S. representatives in 1940, and, but he had a heart condition and died in 1941. So um, the new Mrs. Marland, hmm. Used to after, be his adopted daughter, yeah, Marland. formerly the adopted daughter, in 1953, she vanished his, from Ponca City. And I guess nobody knew where she was. Anyway, 22 years later, she shows back, shows up. back up and lived near the mansion, like in seclusion until she died. How strange. Yeah. So I just want to say this, because of studying these governors, we're going to have a new series on Trail Talk, and it's going to be Oklahoma mansions or historical homes. Mm -hmm. The stories that go along with this Marlin mansion. I mean, we just hit the tip of the iceberg today. This is this is and there's some, other ones of you know yes. variety and things in yes, as well. Exactly. Kind of, so we're going to be covering some of those. So anyway, but the saga of the Moreland family in Ponca City is perhaps the most intriguing story in the bold and exciting history of Oklahoma. So uh, we'll be finding out a little bit more about this family as well, and perhaps what led to the 
unusual marriage of a much older man to his niece slash adopted daughter. I, I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us today on Trail Talk. Tomorrow, Savannah Bowers, who is the teacher um, of the leadership class. I think it's a class, but I, I know it's a, a group of students who do a High lot. School. They do a lot of things in the community, a lot of things at schools here in town. And so she's going to come and talk to us and tell us what that's all about. Awesome. So yeah, that's going to be a very fun episode. And uh, so we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed our trip down through the next five <laughs> governors. Governor Lane. Can't wait to see what the next five have right. to tell. Just getting yeah. crazier and crazier. Oh, I know. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy, Happy trails. trails.